All right. This lecture, we're going to, in some ways, take a little detour and talk about uh, math and uh, physics concept um, that's not directly uh, a part of deformable bodies, but it's also really important, uh, and it puzzles a lot of us, including me. <laughs> um, what is a moment? So we talk about moments all the time in deaf pods. We have moment diagrams. We talk about moments of inertia. Uh, we'll talk about torsional moments. Um, what is a moment? They, we seem to refer to all sorts of different things when we talk about what a moment is. Okay, In a conceptual sense, a moment is some kind of mathematical expression that accounts for a geometric arrangement of a physical quantity. Um, and so the one that you're probably most familiar with before you got to statics or uh, deformable bodies is the moment of inertia when we talk about spinning, right? So how far is the mass um, from an axis that affects how that um, uh, the angular acceleration of that object, right? If I have, a, you know, a, a really skinny thing or a figure skater who's got her arms held close to her body, uh, that is a small moment of inertia because the mass is close to the axis of rotation. If she spreads out her arms, um, then her moment of inertia increases because the mass is farther away from that axis of rotation. Um, so that's one example. Um, we want to know not only how much mass, but how far is that mass from the axis. Uh, and we can use this very useful moment of flatulence uh, to determine our actions uh, when our roommates had <laughs> too much beans. Farts are always funny, so I'm just going to stick with farts here. Uh, we're just going to talk about that a lot. All right. Okay, so we talked about the conceptual sense of a, a moment. What does it mean mathematically? Uh, here we see a mathematical definition of a moment uh, in which this is some physical quantity this is a distance r, and n, both the exponent here and my subscript here, is the order of the moment. So we can have a first order moment in which n is 1, we can have a second order moment in which n is 2, uh, and so forth. And so when we talk about the moment of inertia in dynamics, which we've got over here, which typically comes in this form, Right? And you can see that form repeated over and over here in different ways. Um, that is the second that moment of mass, right? Because our physical quantity is mass, it's a second order moment. So we, could, we should more properly call that the second moment of mass. It's so closely associated with angular momentum and angular inertia uh, that it's been dubbed uh, the moment of inertia. Um, Often Q is not all the same distance from our axis as it is here, which is why we have a nice simple expression here, but more often it's distributed in space, right? And so these two equations, one discrete, one continuous, if I wanted to get this equation, basically what I'm doing is I'm integrating the mass of this whole object over the volume of this object. Uh, and so each point has a certain mass uh, and a certain distance from R. And if I integrated that, I'd get this equation. And so this is basically the solution to this problem uh, that's been done for us already. Okay. We can think of a moment as a weighted sum of the quality Q, uh, where that distance determines the weight. And the higher the order of the moment, the more we're stressing that distance, right? A second order moment is giving much larger weight to things that are far away uh, than it is close by. Uh, a third or fourth order moment would be really dominated by things that are far from the axis. So the moment of inertia used in dynamics uh, as we discussed, is more properly called the second moment of mass. Uh, in deaf bods, uh, we're more concerned with two other kinds of moments, the moments of force uh, and a moment of area. 
the moments of force, when we talk about a moment diagram or we talk about an, an internal resultant moment, that is a moment of force. And it's a first order, it's a first order moment of force. Um, and that is torque, right? So here we have our physical quantity. Here we have our distance. Uh, there's no exponent on the distance. So this is a first order moment. And so torque is the first moment of force, which is why we call that a moment arm, right? This R perpendicular uh, that we define when we talk about force uh, is called a moment arm. Now, the thing that gets a little confusing uh, in this class is that we say torque. Uh, we can say first moment of force, which I wish people would say, but nobody ever does. <laughs> and we say moment, and they all effectively mean the same thing. Torque, we tend to talk about as some kind of applied moment, an applied torque. Moment, we tend to talk about as something internal, um, like when we talk about a moment diagram, we're talking about internal resultant forces, um, but that's not always the case. They get interchanged all the time. But it's important to recognize when we think about moment of inertia, the second order of mass or second moment of mass, it's the same mathematical formulation that QR to the N uh, as torque. And that's why they both get referred to as moments. So when we talk about moments, we always have to talk about an axis too. Um, we're going to talk about moments of area in the next little short video. Um, but when we talk about moments of any kind of moment, we have to talk about an axis because we need to know where the R is from, right? Where are we measuring R from? We can measure R from a single point or we can measure R from an axis, or we can even measure R from a plane uh, if we were talking about a 3D uh, situation. We don't need to deal with that in this class. Um, but in, for any moment in order to define R, we need to measure from something, uh, and that something can be a point or an axis, uh, or a line or a plane. And we can also use moment equations to find an axis which we'll do a little bit in this class, um, we want to find the axis about a, which a moment is zero. Um, and we'll do that when we want to find, say, a centroid uh, or a centroidal axis. We want to basically figure out where, if I add up QR to the N across a whole plane, say, where is the point where I add all of those up and it's going to be equal to zero? But we'll talk about that uh, as we get to centroids too.